is there a truly reality out there that humans can really know? It's an age-old battle between realists and absolutists. God is not great, how religion ruins everything. And yet it's utterly and totally ridiculous. We need to live for something beyond ourselves. Yugoslavian-born poet Charles Simic once wrote in one of his poems, nothing is what it seems to be. That's pretty profound. Nothing is what it seems to be. I mean, it's quite true, isn't it? I mean, we have all have experiences about the world. I mean, simple logic tells us that there's something out there. But what exactly is out there? Well, you know, that's another matter. It's one of these deep philosophical questions that go all the way back into antiquity. What is really there as opposed to what we subjectively experience about being there? And it's very often we can, as science shows us, quite how limited and how wrong what we see is in contrast to what is really there. And there's some important lessons I think we can get from that. And that's what I want to talk about for a few minutes. Very simply, whoever you are, wherever you are right now, sit quietly. Just sit. Do you have any sense that you're moving at all? I mean, if you're watching this in your home, then you must certainly feel that you're not moving at all. I mean, everything your senses and common sense tells you is that you are stationary. You are completely stationary. You know, this idea that the earth moved was nothing new. Folks speculated on that more than 2,500 years ago. And yet, how come when you throw a ball up in the air, how come it lands right back where you threw it? If the earth were moving, it should have shot ahead of you or gone behind you or to the left of you or the right of you, really depending on how fast, depending where the earth was moving. And yet, thus common sense alone, added to your own sen you know, sensations, pretty much as should establish the fact that the earth is stationary, right? I mean, that's just common sense. Our senses tell us that. Well. As we all know, the Earth is moving on its axis at how fast? We're spinning a thousand miles per hour. But that's just the start. We're moving, we're, we're also moving about on, and orbiting the sun at about 30,000 miles per hour. So we're on our axis at a thousand, we're orbiting the sun at 30,000. And that's not all it's doing. And that's because the sun, the sun is moving around the galaxy, around the center of the galaxy at 485,000 miles an hour. So what do we got? A thousand miles per hour on our axis, 30,000 miles we orbit around the sun, 485,000 miles per hour the sun around the galaxy, and finally, the galaxy is moving at a face flattening 1,230,000 230,000, 35,000 miles per hour through the universe, it's through the universe. And the universe itself could be moving as well. And yet, what our senses tell us? If you were to go by what you saw, by what you felt, by what you sensed, what? You'd have to believe, like the ancients did, that we were, were perfectly still. That's how deceiving our senses are. That's how limited of a view of reality we get from them. And you know, there's so much more. Now, what about gravity? We all know about gravity, but did you know that right now, right now, my, burp, my body, my body is exerting a gravitational pull on yours wherever you are. Yes, right now, my body, my body mass is exerting gravitational pull on the mass of your body. And it gets even worse. My body right now is exerting, is exerting a gravitational pull on the sun, on the entire Milky Way, on every star in the next galaxy. Who knows how many millions of light years away. Again, the amount, I'll admit, is infinitesimally small, but it's not zero. 
It's amazing, but every object in the universe with mass exerts a gravitational pull on every other object with math, with math. And since you have mass, you are exerting a gravitational pull on your neighbor down the street or on somebody on some distant star. But again, your senses don't tell you that. I mean, my body right here feels solid. I mean, it's, you can feel it. You can hear it. My senses, though, have totally duped you. My body is almost mostly empty space. It's made of atoms, and atoms are made of a nucleus surrounded by an electron cl cloud that's most of it's empty. Someone said it's almost like a grain of sand at the cathedral at Westminster Abbey. You put a grain of sand on the floor, and the shell of the Westminster Abbey, all that is the center. All the rest is pure empty space. But it sure doesn't feel like that. If you're sitting at a table, feel the table. It feels hard. But your senses have deceived you. In fact, take something. Think of a mirror. Take a shiny, smooth glass mirror and have it sh smooth down as shiny as it can be. You can refine it down and make it as smooth as humanly possible. But in reality, if you got right down to it, it's not smooth at all. It only appears smooth to your senses. But if you get right down to it, the glass is made of atoms. And the atoms are swarming and their electrons buzzing around them in an electron crowd. The point is, again, it might look to your senses smooth, but it's anything but. Yes, we do live in a world of illusions. By the way, you might think you're seeing me or listening to me. Well, of course, you know that you're not seeing me, Clifford Gulch, and you're just seeing a bunch of light waves coming out of your computer. But even in person, when you see somebody in person, what are you seeing? All you're seeing is light waves that reach your eyes and are turned into basically electrochemical transmissions in your brain. And I often wonder what the question is, what is lost in transmission? What, what difference is there between me as I really am and what you see of me when a bunch of light waves turned it into chemicals that, that fire off in the back of your brain? How distorted a view do you have of me? What does the medium of light plus the filters in your eyes and the optic nerves, what do they do to the, the original object when it becomes something in your senses? What is really lost along the way? Now think about it too. Again, wherever you are right now, wherever you are, more than likely, one-third of the world's cell phone calls are right in the air, right about you. They're right there all around you. They're radio waves from TV and radio. All of them are right there in the room. There's radiation from outer space. It's all right there in the room, as real as my voice is that you hear in the room. They're there. And yet what happens? Your senses leave you in complete, total darkness over that. If it wasn't, you know, you had cell phones or you had receivers, you'd have no idea that all this reality is, is there. And even the whole idea of simultaneity, 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 well, you know what I mean, you know the word. Einstein showed that two events that seem like they're happening simultaneously at the same time, it's really an illusion. Somebody could be in another spot and an event which to you where you are at you think it's happening right at, at the same time. Somebody else in another place will see it happening at a different time. And the point is, n neither one is right, neither one is wrong. It all depends on where you're at. But your senses don't tell that to you. Now, what's the point on all this? Because there's so much more that our senses deceive us over. I guess my point is to try to get you to think a little bit for a moment beyond the natural realm beyond the realm of your senses, you know, beyond the realm of reality as it just appears to us. Because I think as we've seen, reality is so much greater than our senses. If anything, reality time and time again tricks our senses. Our senses, in a sense, kind of bounce off what's out there, kind of coming back hazy and fuzzy to us, you know, hazy and funny, fuzzy images and distortions. So, you know, I think it's too bad because there really is so much more out there. You know, I remember the German writer, Gunter Grass. 
He once said something to the effect of, I know only what I can see, feel, taste, or hear. In other words, that was the, all the reality he was going to accept. And I think that's such a sadly limiting view of the world. Because I think we've just seen here, there's so much more out there than what our senses show us. And it's bad enough, it'd be bad enough if what they showed us was even accurate. But even what they show us is often very accurate and deceiving. So I think we need to open our minds a little more and be able to look a little bit beyond just what we can see. Because there's so much more.